rolling, rolling. Okay, sweet. So this week's video, I'm actually going to do like, okay, this week's video, this, this week's video is on teaching research and investigation skills in modern history. Um, me being a student teacher, this is going to be my future. Um, so basically, I what I had to do was I had to look at an article and I went through this article and I, the article that I chose was Valerie um, S. Thaler's um, journal article, Teaching Historical Research in Generation Y, One Instructor's Approach. So basically she went through um, all this research that she did and then she basically did it with her class and wrote about it. This is a little statement that she said. Um, Screen media, be it television, videos, or computer games, rival that that time spent playing outdoors. The most significant um, loser in our transition to digital media has been print sources. Things like um, sources from the library. Um, it's true though, it's so true. Um, just look at today. Uh, who actually goes to the library? Like, legit, what is. What is even a library? Like, no one actually goes there anymore. Um, except, you know, to, bo to borrow like DVDs, music, stuff like that. Um, most people do like a quick Google search. It's pretty easy. You can do it on your phone, wherever you are. It's just knowledge is at our fingertips more than any other time in the Earth's history and our future students um, go to do their research journals they don't have to like they should but they don't have to go to the library and research go through books they can just google things and get all sorts of things online now don't get me wrong there is such thing as google scholar and that is a really good thing but most people don't actually use Google Scholar at all. Most people just go, oh look, that's such and such. Um, what's the point of me actually like Google Scholaring it? Like, oh, ooh, I, I've got like a website, that'll do. Basically, um, in this video I will dissect Fowler's article um, as she talks about this issue of teaching research skills and investigation skills to um, the next generation because um, clearly too much knowledge is a bad thing you can be at a huge disadvantage if you have so much stuff just at your fingertips basically um, the first part of her article looks at um, today's generation um, as I already said today's generation has a huge like talent for multitasking um, and I don't just mean like um, the good old, you know, doing something like on the phone. I mean, it's not that hard, but like that's not what I'm talking about at all. Um, <clears throat> um, she puts, she raises a point in her own words, saying, "The term might have um, have coined talking to someone on the phone and emailing simultaneously." Um, Yes, but today's generation can do a whole lot more than that at the same time. Tens today may be found texting friends, checking social media, um, doing homework, playing video games, eating at the same time. Um, this world of information means that today's youngsters, they're just so used to having so much information. Um, just right at their fingertips, as I said before. Uh, all you need to do is Google it. Um, there's no point in going to the library um, or buying books for that matter. You can get online books. Why would you need to go to the library? It's just a waste of time. Um, because Generation Y usually gathers information quite quickly and doing it quickly is also uncritically. Um, it is seen in their assignments and this also affects how they learn. Um, Fella states, while there, 
while their level of visual literacy um, easily surpasses that of older generations, their textual literacy already lacks behind. Um, yeah. In thinking how to overcome this issue, the lacking of, of contextual, textual literacy, um, you'll have to look directly at technology. Directly at what they're using to get to get their content. Most people have like iPhones in their pockets. Um, you know, like they've always got like headphones in. Um, obviously, this is just stereotypes. Um, if you're someone who does this, you know who you are. But it's so true. Um, there's always an iPhone, iPad, laptop. They're always, we're always, how can I say there? We are always using technology, like legit. I am in generation Y, so I completely concur with this. Sailor likens it to the constant um, competition, really, um, with um, the lure of the unread text. Um, you know, there's nothing more you want to do yeah, like, say you're in class and you feel that zzz of your phone. You just want, you want so bad, you want so badly to to look at that. And it's a, it's a huge distraction for today's youth. Um, so it, it also indicates that they tend to scan a source instead of looking thoroughly through it. Um, Let's face it, it's not just a problem in the history classroom, it's a problem everywhere, th throughout all classrooms. Um, I'm focusing mainly on history because that is my key learning area. Um, that is my, I don't know, passion. Um, but it's also a huge problem in science, for example. Um, you know, with all the science experiments and research you have to put in. Ezra, state, Ezra Moed states in her article that at the start of this millennium, the quest for achieving a common goal encouraging teachers to use specific inquiry as a pedagogical approach led to a big con commitment led to a big commitment of resources for developing innovative curricula, building teachers' skills and systematic reform to support teaching, science teaching and learning in the United States, Europe and Australia. So clearly, the skills of research is a huge and important part of a student's learning. The question now is how to implement it. How do you interplant... In, interplant? Oh my gosh. How do you implement this into your classroom. Um, one way a history teacher can go about this is to look at the assignments that they're giving their students. Um, the simplest thing is to let students learn or study things that they are interested in. The more a student is interested in a particular topic, the more time they will invest in it, the more thorough they will research it because they're interested in it. They want to learn more. Yeah, let them have choice in the depth of their studies, or even better, rethink the common form of assessment. Students will always say, oh, it's boring, I don't want to write an essay myth. I don't want to write an essay, that's so boring. And why, why would we do this in the real world? Has a fair point, unless you're gonna do your PhD. But that's beside the point. Look at the individual talents and interests of the students. Um, Sailor adds that taking students to a library, showing them and introducing them to their librarian um, and just showing them how useful it is to get books, showing them and introducing them to encyclopedias or even electronic ones, if that helps them in any sort of, like, any way. Introducing them to the school librarian and teaching them the basic skills of gathering basic facts. Creating a list of useful terms that they could use. Um, like teaching them how to catalog sources. Um, generating the initial list of secondary, um, 
secondary sources. This is one huge tip for the library, um, a library student. It could help them in many ways. Even if a school doesn't have a library, just sit with the students. Like, sit them down, um, get them to look at um, sources. And you could always show them the octopus tree. Um, sorry students, if you don't know about that one and your teacher tries it on you, you know it now. But, um, basically, just get them to look at a source. Get them to evaluate whether it's legitimate or not. Um, this is a huge part of research. Um, they need to know what sources are useful. However, the main problem with um, with these uh, assignments is not just the research question itself. Um, I mean, the research itself, it's also the question, as I just alluded to. However, that is only the beginning. The big thing students struggle with is the research question itself. This is part of their assignment. It's a huge part of their assignment. Um, and it will guide um, their information that they gather. Thaler, in Thaler's article, she describes how she implements teaching, and re teaching research and investigation skills. Um, in fact, she actually talks about how she um, uses group work as um, a form of teaching method, which is one that you would not normally associate with, like research and, and such. She says um, that the, f um, the research question is the frame that will help determine what sources are most relevant. Um, this can be achieved by doing a simple inquiry log. Group work in class clearly plays to students' strengths and helps ease the way the faint-hearted may struggle, particularly at the end of the semester, but the vast majority have come out ahead. It's a novel approach and one that we don't usually think of when we associate in class research and investigation. It's something that the research stuff happens by itself. You don't usually say, you know what, Let's do group work. And of course, um, it's in a huge range of historical context to investigate significant social, economic, technical features, individual groups, events, such like that. Um, this is one huge part in the stage six curriculum, um, especially in depth studies. Um, um, as I mentioned, the log um, research logs, it basically gets the students to look at a source, whether it's applicable, whether it's not what kind of source it is, how it will be useful, things like that. So, some final words from Sailor. Generation Y students are by nature expert sprinters in many ways of their lives and have been rewarded for their ability to go so fast and produce results quickly. However, it's time they, to, it's time they learn to slow down. Anyway, so if you liked this video, please give it a massive thumbs up. That'll be like so much appreciated. I'm sorry for this um, end lighting. It's basically because it started to rain outside, so. Yeah. Anyway, so if you love this video, give it a massive thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more in the future. Um, until next week, see ya.